We need to begin now Solomon and emergence of the divided monarchy, especially. So here we discuss about the kings. Now, historical background about how, what was the, what was the condition of Egypt at that time, during the time of Solomon, Aram, what was the condition of Aram? And uh, so those things are explained. Some of the names are given there and what happened in the history given there. And most of the book of Kings, Book of Kings takes place during the period of New Assyrian Empire. That's about this time period. Um, I said there. So please, as you go, when you get time, look if you are interested in knowing the battles and what happened, just you can go and look at uh, the <clears throat> notes. There are explanations are given there uh, and until uh, Babylon. And uh, so. Please look at that. So let's go. Asha, to, yes. Asha, one clarification. Sure. Uh, when we count the seven empires, we don't count the Assyrian empire. Oh, we, we, I, yeah. <laughs> Actually, that was in my mind now. Because I, yesterday, as we were talking about inside the, in the church, uh, we need to, we, I forgot to mention Assyrian empire. Oh, I okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I was I was confused I, because I thought it is not to be counted. No, it has to be. It has to be because before Babylon came, Assyrian Empire Assyrian, was Assyrian yeah, Empire strongest. Was, yeah. That and uh, my wife Flysy was just talking. You somehow you missed oh. one. <laughs> yeah, okay, she was okay. working on that yesterday. Hey, it's good you have very good control of you. Uh, yeah. I know, you know, one <laughs> listens keenly and uh, <laughs> criticize everything. If I make the more. theology with theology backing, <laughs> you know, uh, my wife. Thank you, boss. Thank points you. out Thank the you, mistakes that I I do in I in my preaching, and, and, I, and that's what I say. <laughs> I make mistakes, and and the other one was talking about uh, one the seven wonders of the world. I think I use the word miracle. So, okay, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, for Babylon, hanging garden is not a miracle, it's a wonder, right? Wonder. Yeah, there yes. is a difference between yes. miracle and wonder. So, yes, yes. I make that kind of mistake and uh, <laughs> I do uh, because, uh, you know, oratory skill, mine is not that great, but uh, I mean, I, I adjust. <laughs> anyway, and I forget also, I forget. But thank you for, yeah. So, yes, thank Assyria you. is one of the, yes. That's how you get, you have Egypt, <clears throat> the first one. Second is Assyria. Third is Babylon. And fourth is Persia. Uh, uh, fifth is Greece. And sixth is the Roman Empire. So you have six. Six are over. Six empires are over. And the seventh one is, we call in the book of Revelation, the revived Roman Empire, the seventh one, uh, <clears throat> especially during the tribulation period. And if you read chapter 17 of Revelation, you would see seventh and eighth because in the middle of tribulation period, this Antichrist is slaughtered or killed and he raised back to life. So there is um, a verse which is, says that it is, of course, he is part of seven. And he's also part of eight because he's going to rule the second half completely different from his first half. So that's the reason Book of Revelation says he's seven and no, he's eight. You know, that's the language used in Revelation chapter seven. It's very interesting as you study Book of Revelation. So which are, those are very difficult passages for many to interpret. But yes. Okay. Let's go to Book of Kings. <clears throat> Uh, we are looking at uh, all the ship and date. Jewish Talmud states that Jeremiah wrote the Book of Kings, right? So Jewish Talmud, uh, believe, you know, Jewish people basically believe to this one. Kings are written by Jeremiah. And this understanding uh, fits much of the book, which harmonizes neatly with Jeremiah's prophecy. And in at least one instance, yes, it's very clear and uh, displays near identity with the Jeremiah. Jeremiah, even if Jeremiah did not write kings, there is a strong evidence of interdependence 
Jeremiah and Book of Kings are connected in a huge way, and therefore Jewish people basically believed that it was written by Jeremiah. But uh, the tension with this view is that Second Kings twenty four and twenty five is clearly written from Babylon, from Babylon, and Jeremiah had been deported uh, to Egypt at that time, right? So that is the tension that we will face. Um, so how do we understand? So then there, there. So this is what Jewish people's understanding. Then critical scholars who don't believe the Bible, uh, they they have come up with a various uh, way of explaining. They said this is a late eighth or seventh century uh, compilation of various documents, uh, and they would say. The some part is written during the days of Joash, um, and an ecstatic version is written later. So they have come, they have made a lot of, you know, made it so complex in not, in explaining it is written by whom. Basically, they deny all the author, all the conservative authorship. So we know that um, we don't believe what critical scholars suggest. So let's look at conservative view. Uh, how about the conservatives? How do they explain who wrote kings? Uh, of course, we know that we have first kings and second kings, but in Jewish Bible, it's simply kings. So uh, conservative view also is not really dogmatic because of the, uh, because the book is anonymous, right? The book doesn't say who, who actually wrote. It may have been a prophet. May have been written by a prophet. Maybe Jeremiah or Ezekiel. Since the author admits he using a variety of court records, yeah, he is using what? Court records. Possibility of a card scriber or a chronicler also emerges, like such as Ezra, maybe. Right? We don't know exactly. Possibility is there. For example, if you look at you are, you are going to see various books named. Book of the Annals of Solomon for the material in First King one to eleven. There is a book is used for reference. The Book of Annals of the Kings of Israel, that is the Northern Kingdom, is mentioned seventeen times in um, fourteen and fifteen of First Kings. Then books of Annals of Kings of Judah, and that is part of the Southern Kingdom, is used in many about fifteen times. The author also may have consulted David court records, the book of Isaiah, and even other sources. So, yes, if you read closely the book of Kings, you will see book of Kings mentions various books. This is seen in this book, recorded here in this book, recorded in that book. The names are given. So we don't know exactly, maybe written by, could be, you know, Jeremiah is a good candidate. Or is a kill, you know, either of them could be. We, we are not sure because by because Kings doesn't say it is written by him. Right? And let's look at the plays in canon. Now, uh, as we know, two book of kings together comprise the fourth and final book of the former prophets in Jewish canon. Hmm? We know that one. Uh, we already discussed in the Jewish canon. We have in the Old Testament, we have how many? 39 books right whereas they have very in the, they don't have that many uh, you know 39 is comprised if you if you want to know how this is maybe if you have forgotten maybe i can show you the chart one more time how this is divided uh, the old testament is divided by uh, jewish people i did not in the notes but maybe for the sake of clarity yes i can show you Right, uh, this is the way that uh, Jewish Old Testament is divided, right? Divided into three sessions: of Torah, Nevi'im, and Ketuvim, right? And we know that Nevi'im or prophets are divided into two former prophets and later prophets. Ketuvim is divided kind of three poetic books five roles or known as Mikilo in historical books, right? So where does the king comes? King comes here, right here, right? That is part of the former prophets. That's how the king comes. 
so they have only one. We, not like our book, you have first kings and second kings. That's not the way Jewish people, they have all the two books com comprised together as one book. Right? So all the chapters are there from first and second kings, but it is comprised as one book. All right. Now let's go to uh, let's go to the place where we are right now. Yes, so the forum prophets. Of course, we know where it comes in our in the in the <clears throat> Septuagint. Okay, like in all Jewish sources, kings are regarded like Samuel as a single book. Yes, we know that one. Um, yeah, so we we. Uh, and okay, this is particularly clear in view of the fact that Elijah narrative spans in First Kings seventeen to Second uh, Kings two, so it's a completely together Elijah's narrative. Like Samuel, division of kings in two books in the English canon can be traced back to Septuagint, the the, the Greek translation of the Old Testament, uh, where you see kings are divided into two, and in the Greek and Latin tradition, book of kings are often regarded with the books of Samuel and as a four volume corpus, that is first and second Kings. Uh, thus first and second Kings becomes third and fourth Kings, uh, according to uh, some of the Latin traditions. Now, while the Hebrew text of Samuel is poorly preserved and the Alexis demonstrably superior, the opposite is true in Kings. The, prim the premise has been generally confirmed by Qumran library. Yes. Uh, Hebrew Old Testament of the book of Samuel is very good text. Not much, uh, not much uh, text criticisms problems. But whereas, whereas Samuel uh, is not at all good, so we, we know that there are a lot of mistakes and we had a lot of verses to explain what is the right reading. But that's not the case with Kings. Kings are best in Hebrew Bible itself. Now let's ask the question. Purpose for writing. Why the book of Kings were written? The book of Kings is a book of theological life history. Yeah, it is a history, but it is a theological history. Now when I say theological history, what, I, what do I mean? History, it com historically it completes the history of the monarchy begun in Samuel and covers the reign of Solomon until the death of Jehoiachin in captivity. This is a long history, right? It goes from, so it completes the history uh, begun in Samuel about the, about the reign of Saul. Then you know that, the, uh, that at the end it introduced Solomon then Book of Kings records the rest of the Jewish kings. And it goes all the way to the captivity in Babylon. Theologically, it is correct to call kings a Deuteronomic history. Right? Deuteronomy, is, this is to say, it recounts. Remember Deuteronomy? Remember you have numbers in Deuteronomy? Deuteronomy is a recounting, right? Recounts. The fidelity or infidelity of each king to the details of covenant renewal documented in the autonomy. Yes. So it records, it tells the fidelity, the faithfulness of the kings and unfaithfulness of kings is detailed in the book of Kings. However, the theory that is, is this is historical. Retelling of events related to a late 7th century return is flawed. It is irreparably skews the interpretation of the book. Now, that's not the case. What we are saying, it recounts the story of kings. Basically, this is the very important. If you are preaching from kings, right? If you are preaching from the book of kings, here is the question to be answered, right? And the book of kings answers this question. Why are we in exile? What led children of Israel to be in exile in Babylon? Why? What made? What was? What happened wrong? That is what we read. 
Okay, so if you know that one, then you sit and read the entire book of Kings together, like first and king, second together, you will be able to answer, yes. He's answering why. Talks about the sin of the kings. Now the structure of the kings, the book of kings alternates between historical, between historical annals and narratives, right? Historical annals and narratives. Books are used. Each king's reign treated summarily with respect to his lineage, age, length of reign, capital, death, and successor, and evaluation of the spiritual character. So that's how it explains. It, each king's lineage is explained, age is explained, length of reign is explained, what was the capital at that time, and the death is explained, his successor is explained, and his spiritual character. He it would say he was a bad king, he was a good king. Select number of kings and prophets are singled out for narrative treatment. In the historical uh, annals, chronology is critical, right? Offering us a detailed account of the basic features of each reign. So in the narrative sections, while not unmindful of chronology, but they are also thematic in their organization. So we will look at that as we go further. So please understand, yes, the Book of Kings explains the story of kings in a particular way. All right, particular way. It talks about their lineage, age, length of reign, capital, death, successor, and their character is explained. All right, those are the introductions. Now let's look at uh, exegetical and theological issues in the Book of Kings. What are the problems that we face as we discuss uh, these, uh, discuss uh, the issues here? What are the theological problems? First two problem is apparent chronological imprecision. You know chronology, right? You understand the word chronology. So there is a problem of imprecision, that it's not really precise. Not precise. Okay, what, okay how do we understand? Commentators and critics have long observed, observed discrepancies. You know the word discrepancies? Okay. In the chronology of the kings that are asked of, at first blush, Cassidius suspicion on Bible's claim to energy. All right, you say Bible is given by God, and they see errors in that. These discrepancies are not significant in degree. But a sheer number of these discrepancies troubling, for instance, all right, for instance, for example, First Kings chapter 15, verse 25 and 28, we read about Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, you know, the kingdom divided into two. Israel was divided into two. To southern kingdom, northern kingdom. Southern kingdom was known as the kingdom of Judah. Northern kingdom was known as the kingdom of Israel, right? And uh, Jeroboam ruled the northern kingdom, right? After Solomon, right? So Nadab, son of Jeroboam, became the king of Israel in the second year of Asa, king of Judah. And he reigned over Israel two years. Right, that is 25. Then we read, Basha killed Nadab in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, and succeeded him as a king. All right, so you have Basha succeeding Nadab in the northern kingdom. Now the question, okay, the, what are the things we need to look at here? There are, look at the following consideration. There are two conventions used in marking the beginning of Babylonian year, right? Uh, how uh, Babylonian year is marked. For example, a spring, that is a month of Nizan, reckoning, and autumn, that is Tishri, reckoning. There are two ways. Uh, used in marking the beginning of Babylonian year. 
rather than beginning the year in January like we do, right? We have our year begins in January. The ancients regarded the new year as the beginning of beginning in spring. Right? Spring or autumn. There are two ways they usually look at. Right? Some people see beginning of the year in the Nizan or spring. And others use autumn as the beginning of the year. Thus, when harmonizing these dates, confusion emerges. It is for this reason that one regularly sees order, plus one dates written like this, right? Usually they would say A5354 BC. Why? Why with a slash? Because it's hard to say exact year according to our calculation because there are various ways they look at the beginning of a year. Right, that's the first thing to consider. Second, there are also two conventions used dating general period, the ascension year scheme and non-ascension year scheme. Right? And when they date ascension, non-ascension. Right? What is ascension? Ascension model regards. First full year of King's reign as his first year. Right? First year means the full completed reign. No ascension model regards the year in which King began to reign. Right? So, for example, if the king began to reign uh, from January, or sorry, if a king began to reign January, yeah, from January, no ascension model regards. The king, when he became the king, so he became the king January 2000, okay, let's put 2022. So they would say in the year of king, they would say January 2022. So that is a non ascension model that regards in which king began to reign as his first year. So they would say this is the first year. First year. All right. And the and first year and the First full year of his uh, reign as a second year. But essential model would say first year means, okay, he began January and completed till December 2022. And so January 2023 is the first year for them, right? So a king, when he completes the year, they will call first. There are two ways they call first year. One is when they completed one year rule. Second is a, is a, uh, a non-essential model that is a beginning, right? It's just like, you know, the other day we had a, uh, a debate in our home, right? Uh, about the birthday, you know. Uh, when do you say, because my daughter, uh, Laura uh, had her birthday yesterday. So she is eight years old. So now that is always challenging. Okay, what is? How do you say? Do you say she? Okay, she's eight years old now, or she completed eight, and it is the ninth year. How do you say? So I would argue that she's she's she. You know, when according to the uh, rule, you know, eight when. A person's birthday comes, that means, okay, he completed eight years. So when he completes eight year, we say she is eight year old, right? We will not say, okay, she completed eight and going to the nine, or we will not say nine year. We'll say eight year old, right? Because we, we look at completion, right? That is the non ascension model. But an essential model always, like they consider the first as the big, for example, if it is a birth today, the beginning of the birth. Beginning of the birth as the first year, not the completion of the first year as the first. So that is the difference here. So when you calculate date like that, there are two ways people write, it is always a problem, right? 
comes a very long brush of the discrepancies in the kings as a matter of simple imprecision. The problem with this approach is, is that the material seems to be written in very extra, extra terms. During 1960s and 70s, Edwin Thiel solved this puzzle and published two works. Um, and the, the name is their chronology of the Hebrew kings. In these books, he hypothesis that when he brought, you know, wrote about that, he said, Kings of Israel began their re, re, okay, regnal year in the spring month of Nizan, right? While the king of Judah began their regnal year or the reigning time in autumn month of Tishri. So when he studied, he said, okay, what you need to know, look at the northern kingdom. They always started from Nizan, rain started from Nizan. Whereas the southern kingdom always started from Tishri, the autumn season. King of Israel always followed a known ascension year. Came from Jeroboam to Jehoaz. And the ascension year came from Jehoaz to Hosea. So this is the king of Israel used to method used two method one is known ascension year for some time not throughout that is jeroboam to jehoas and then from jehoas to Isaiah, they used ascension year whereas kings of judah followed ascension years came from rehobayam you know who is rehobayam son of solomon right rehobayam to jehoshaphat and known ascension years came from jehoram to Joaz. Then again, reverted back to the ascension year scheme from Amaziah to Jehoiachin, the last king of Judah. If you know, when I say all the names of this king, yes, if you have read the Bible, you will know these names, right? Oftentimes, many people don't know the names. They said, what are you talking about? It's because you may not have read the book of Kings. So I would challenge you, if you don't know these names, go ahead, maybe within a week, take a week. And read the entire books, first and second kings, together. Like, you know, like spend maybe considerable amount of time to two hours or something like in a day to understand the history that would help. So when the author of the book of kings used to court records of each kingdom, he did not harmonize, try to harmonize the dates. He simply reported them as it was written. Assuming that the readers would understand the complexities of regnal dating. That is what happened. It also uh, probable that father-son corrigence is added to the confusion. So, yeah. So, this is something that we can look at. If you have a problem with the dates in the kings, here are the explanations for, the, for that one. While admittedly a complicated problem, and even solution is a complicated. Telly's hypothesis provides a workable solution to a long-standing problem. Are there errors in the book of Kings? Yes. By considering his arguments, we can fair, fairly say, you know, that it was not error. The author of Kings simply reported as it was recorded in the other books. Despite its complexi uh, complexity, it's probably an explanation that is superior to shrugging of the problem as much biblical inex inexactness, right? It is probably an explanation that is superior to shrugging of. So it's better to have the explanation. So first of all, our first problem is what? Problem is the uh, chronological imprecision. How to answer? Okay, answers are good. Now let's look at the second one the exactness of chronology second issue because of specific scientifically datable events it is possible to reconstruct the exact years of many of the events in the kings it's possible for instance an eclipse recorded on a serial eponym list can be dated to June 15, according to our month, 7, 6, 
3 BC. Yes, 763 BC, there was a what? An eclipse recorded. This piece of data may then be used precisely date events before and after the eclipse. Events in some cases that appear in the Bible dates such instances. For, for example, um, the same eclipse is used to explain about Shalmaneser's exacting of tribute during the first year of Jehu. Right, he's exact exacted a tribute from Jehu in eighty one four BC and seven zero one BC. Sennacherib's siege of Jerusalem in the fourteenth year of Ezekiah. So yes, the eclipse was a solar eclipse was clearly used here to to find out the events that took place. Based on these dates, then it is possible to construct precise date for the most of the events in the Book of Kings. So even scientifically, it is possible to explain the events in the Kings accurately. And we don't have much issues there. All right. Now, let's look at the third one. The narrative selection. Right? Narrative selection. Why certain events are singled out for explanation? Hand in narrative, and others are not. That is a matter of debate for some people. Why some events are explained, some are simply mentioned. Why? In the book of Kings. Powerful kings, powerful kings with a lengthy range sometimes get scanned treatment. Very little explanation, even though they reigned for 40 years. Very little explanation. While the other, historically minor kings, sometimes are treated at length. Why? That is the question. Now, what seems to govern the selection is specific obedience and disobedience. That was the main thing the author was looking at. With respect to the law, okay, who obeyed the law? The prophet, that was he looking at, who obeyed the law, who did not obey the law. Since purpose of king seems to be an explanation as to look at the question, why Israel is in exile? That was the purpose. Then it seems to make a great sense, right? He wants to say why we are in his, so he is not recording simply the history of the kings. He's answering the question why people were in exile. That means he wants to really focus certain events. The up and downs of the monarchy can be closely tied to obedience and disobedience of various kings, to the revelation of God through his covenant and his spokesperson. This is also why explains why Elijah and Elisha narratives what? 35 percentage of the book. Why? Because simply to say how Israel and Judah disobeyed God. And that's so it, it, it just comprises 35 percentage of the book. Right? So when you look at that, then we get the idea of why certain things are explained so well and certain things are not explained, right? The next I have some explanation here about prophets, right? So what I will do, I will take tomorrow to explain about Old Testament prophetism, right? For the, maybe for the, this may be, did I explain in the tentative? I don't know, I don't remember, I explained much. So I will take uh, time to explain Old Testament prophetism, uh, according to the Old Testament, what are the things we need to understand? What is this prophetic office and things like that? So that we will have clear understanding of how uh, Israel saw these prophets. Okay.